Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Paola Dubini. Welcome to this uh, uh, class that is, in fact, also open uh, to whoever is interested as part of Book City. <clears throat> so uh, I am uh, the faculty of Bocconi University and the management professor here, and uh, I am in charge of this, uh, of this class, which is a management class in uh, a degree in uh, Man in management for the arts, culture, and communication. As uh, this is uh, a, a session, uh, a, a class activity that is going to be offered online due to the pandemic restrictions, um, we are recording this uh, session. Uh, the, the recording will be available to the students enrolled in the class, but I'm afraid that it will not be available for the people who are uh, visiting for, for the day, uh, I think. If I have the possibility of uh, extracting a portion of this, uh, it will be available on the website, on YouTube, on the channel uh, of Book City. But for the time being, I'm not yet sure about um, As uh, we are uh, quite a few people this afternoon, uh, may I ask you to use uh, the chat, the little balloon in uh, uh, in the if you press uh, the pink uh, the pink uh, square on the lower right side of your screen? Uh, should you should you need to make a comment? Uh, my idea, if it is okay with you and with our speaker that I'm going to introduce in a second, uh, my idea is that maybe we could uh, let um, uh, her speak and, and present, and uh, um, I will be happy to act uh, as a moderator and so to, to gather and read the, the different uh, comments that come up in, in chat, and then we will have time to, to have a little a little discussion. Um, the, the whole session will last 1.5 hours, so we'll be together until 4.30. Okay, so having given uh, all these uh, little instructions, I am particularly happy to introduce uh, the, 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 the content of this uh, conversation and uh, our guest. The idea behind this uh, conversation is to talk about contemporary culture and uh, from a managerial as well as from an entrepreneurial perspective. And the industry that we are looking at is the magazine in industry. And I am pretty sure that when we say magazine, all of us have a specific industry in mind. And uh, what our guest will show us uh, is that, in fact, the whole uh, um, industry is uh, reshaping and changing quite significantly. And uh, thanks to uh, some young and, uh, and entrepreneurs and projects uh, that are contributing to, in fact, redefining the whole sector. Uh, our guest today, I'm particularly pleased to introduce uh, uh, our guest today, who is Francesca Spiller from uh, Reading Room, uh, for several reasons. First of all, because uh, the project of Francesca herself is, in my opinion, a very interesting one. So she is herself an entrepreneur in this field. Um, and also because she is an ex-student from CREAC and ACME. And so for many of us, uh, is an interesting uh, speaker because she was uh, like you not that many years ago. So welcome, uh, Francesca. Thank you so much for being with us. I guess the floor is yours. So thank you, Paola. Um, I'm very happy to, to do this uh, open lesson. And, uh, you know, as Paola just told, I'm a, an ex-former student, so I'm, a, you know, double pleased to be here with you for this uh, one hour and a half time together. So, um, 
this lesson is focused on contemporary magazines and uh, I want to give you an overview of the this kind of new publishing industry. Uh, so I did a presentation because I think it might be useful to have some visual um, parts since we are doing digital and not physical. I think, uh, you know, it's very important to, to, to see, to watch, otherwise it remains too much, you know, theoretical and not practical. So I started, voila, so this is, I choose this image as first because this is a very, um, you know, uh, iconic place in New York is called Casa Magazine and uh, it's... Sorry, you know, sorry, Francesca, if I interrupt you. Yeah. Uh, somebody is asking us if you could speak a little bit more loud because ah, okay. uh, apparently the, the audio you know. is... Yeah. Okay. So I was saying that I choose this image uh, of Casa Magazine in New York, which is an iconic place uh, uh, for magazine lover and uh, professional and uh, it's really something that uh, you know people knows and uh, it's very very you know uh, kind of uh, a place to go uh, when you are whenever you are in New York so this is the first abstract uh, just a second because the slide is not I, working. I can, I can move it for you if you want. Okay, so the third one. So this is, you know, the abstract. And then we can, you know, move on the fourth. You can move, Paola, sorry. Yeah, for some reason it is slow. There we okay. go. Okay, so, you know, a new generation of magazines. So. Back in a heyday of print, we needed magazines uh, for information they provided. Just think, you know, as a teenager, bored in a countryside town, and he needed, you know, in the 80s, in the 90s, he needed to read Vogue, The Face, uh, or this kind of magazine in order to connect to all that was cool and exciting at, the, at that time in the world. Now that digital media perverts everyday aspect of our lives, prints, I mean, the print's role has changed a lot. So it's no more an information giver, but it has changed completely. So what happened to that, you know, uh, teenager in the countryside? Now he or she has Instagram, has TikTok, has Twitter. So they don't need any more to read magazine to be, you know, updated on the latest uh, um, trend or, you know, things going on. So digital media provides information faster and more cheaply than printed paper can ever hope to. So in trying to complete magazines, I mean, traditional magazines, have found themselves, uh, you know, playing a sort of losing game. So the faster and the cheaper they try to be, the more they devalue their products and the more readers they lose. So starting from this point, we can you know, move on the digital media. So there are mainly, I mean, five key points uh, of this kind of new generation of magazines of publishing industry and they are digital media, new values, new uh, advertising approach, new uh, distribution and uh, uh, the creation of community. So starting with the first key point, digital media, so as you can see, I put for each point, I put a quote, which is, you know, uh, representative of, uh, of what I'm going to say. So in this case, we know that many people, you know, there is always this kind of 
you know, phrase, sort of mantra, I mean, in a negative sense, that the, the uh, print is dead or is dying, and, you know, publishing houses are, you know, decreased. But mm, this kind of new generation of magazine, instead of, uh, you know, mourning about the internet, you know, they try to find advantages and positive things about the digital media and the internet. So if the, you approach in the right way, in a clever way, technologies and all, you know, internet devices removes barriers to magazine makings. So, for example, next slide. It's not working. Okay, here I give you some concrete example. For example, thanks to you know uh, internet, the you know fundamental task of making a magazine, such as finding suppliers, contacting contributors, <laughs> connecting with the retailers, or you know collecting subscription, has been made easier by the internet. This case is a. A magazine, Nang magazine, it's a magazine about Asian movies, Asian cinema. And as you can see from the colophon, you have, you know, people living in different country, in different parts of the world, but they all do, you know, the same magazine. They work for the same magazine. So thanks to digital, they don't need to have office. They don't need to have, you know, a physical place, but they can work you know, everywhere. So in this case, we have the publisher from Switzerland, the designer in, who lives in South Korea, several guest editor around the world, you know, partner in this, in the, this is a technical partner. So they provide the paper from, you know, between Sweden and Poland and the web developer who lives in uh, Mauritius. So moving on, we can say that internet has removed geography barriers so for example the next example is an african magazine called what and it's a brand new magazine and it's about promoting uh, african photography around the world and once again you know if you think about 10 15 years ago it, it would be impossible to read and magazines from South Africa. It was impossible not only to read, but you know, to know the existence of these kind of magazines. And you know, in a large sense, internet uh, has you know give the possibility to found a new business model. I just want to to, to show you one because. You know, I have so many topics to discuss, but for example, you know, uh, the crowdfunding. Crowdfunding is a, a really a new business model for many of these magazines because they give this platform, give the possibility to, you know, publisher to connect directly with the, with the reader, with the community. So these are, you know, very different uh, um, examples of different magazines, but to, to show you how, you know, technologies, internet, digital has been, uh, you know, positive and advantage for this kind of new generation of magazines. So if traditional magazines have been, in a sense, beat by digital, uh, for this new generation, digital is totally an opportunity, is a chance, is, you know, something positive. So this is why uh, most, I mean, all, I can say almost all these kind of magazines, they have both digital and print version. Some of them mm, began as digital and then they uh, start printing. So because they need to be on both platforms, they need to be on uh, offline, and they, you know, think and produce content for each, um, you know, for in a sense for each platform. So what you can read in the paper, 
version is different from what you can you know scroll on their instagram uh, profile uh, this is because they really care about the reader and they want to provide uh, more content as possible so they use really in a very clever uh, way and fresh approach the uh, internet so now we move uh, on a, another uh, um, topic uh, which is uh, a very uh, important because it's about the content these magazines are um, we can say uh, magazines that talk about contemporaneity they talk uh, to creative uh, um, people who are who works in creative industries i mean people who works in fashion design but also you know like architecture de um, graphic designer or like uh, music lover cinema uh, fan so um it's very very important uh, uh, the content of the magazines because it's the key part to try to create a community and to be not only a niche but to uh, reach uh, a wider audience so i move okay so producer of successful indie magazines I, as I said, don't try to beat digital, but they focus on the things that only uh, print can do. For example, they, you know, they play with the format, they mix paper, they publish long photo essays that, you know, takes months to research and hours for the reader to read and absorb. But the most important things, they really craft issues that uh, are beautiful collectible and timeless objects and these you know words collectible and timeless are you know kind of uh, trademark of this new generation of magazines because we are you know used to consider magazines as you know something that you buy and then you throw away because they age so they are not more no more interesting because the news they you know they talk about uh, they age these kind of magazines don't try to talk about any news they don't uh, they are not focused on what what is going on because for this we have internet which is 24 hour real time they talk about contemporary they talk about uh, you know a wider spectrum in terms of time so in this sense they become uh, uh, quite soon collectible and really um, timeless objects so i give you some example for example this first one is an English magazine called Pan and the Dream and it's kind of very large format it's a sort of uh, you know a portfolio and this has you know the, the, the particularity of being in a limited edition this is something that you can see like in an artist book for example and not in a magazine so if you go to a in a kiosk or to a newsstand you never find a magazines uh, traditional magazines in a limited edition in this sense they play with the format they play with the possibility of printing the next example is for example is a sirene which is an italian magazine about uh, uh, you know about the sea the ocean everything related uh, uh, you know about water and uh, uh, this magazine talks about travel talks about sports uh, uh, all the activities that you can do uh, inside outside the water and they have the particularity of using a special paper uh, made you know from algae and in this sense we can say that it, this is a you know a very um, circular project because 
the theme is not only in the you know in the articles in the interview but it's also in the way they design the magazine they create and they publish the magazines so you know the um, so-called you know um, magazine makers uh, we can say publishers some use the word editors uh, are you know a reader first and then they are publisher so in this sense uh, you know they start from the question uh, uh, why we want to do a magazines and what we want to uh, to talk in these magazines so we have you know very very kind of uh, uh, small niche but they can be combined for example, this is a, a Danish magazine, uh, photography magazine, but every issue is uh, focused on a single color. So, you know, you have a kind of mood board around the color and what this color suggests in terms of feelings, in terms of, you know, emotion. So in this sense, um, you know, the, the, the publisher and the editors are very, very clever because they try to go outside their niche, but at the same time, uh, a second niche to talk to. So they can, you know, they it's a way to, to, to have more audience, uh, but to be respectful of the, uh, you know, original niche. So this is like photography and color, or for example, Record Culture Magazine is about, you know, uh, music lover and collector so it's a magazine about uh, uh, people who collect uh, vinyls and in this sense uh, once again you have you know the music fan base uh, plus uh, all the collector uh, you know uh, passions so in all of these uh, examples you see that um, unfortunately you can't browse the magazine you can't touch the magazines but it's you know very very interesting also from a, a, an aesthetic point of view because you know the formats are very different someone choose big formats other very small and you know also inside you have a lot of images because you know the fil rouge of all of these magazines is to put at the center the image so image is always present and around the image you know, you have all the uh, the text, the interview, the essays, uh, the you know. But image is, I mean, everywhere, and in this sense, they you know they are parts of you know the the wider culture visual you know studies and the culture visual um, big theme that is going to be you know uh, something in the next years because it's. Uh, it's associated with the, all the platforms, social platforms, so they are very connected, the two. And one more example of these new um, values, new editorial uh, approach is Archivio. And this is uh, an Italian magazine, once again, and uh, it has the, you know, uh, it's specific about archives. But, you know, the interesting aspect is that they use material uh, already existing. So in this sense, uh, this is uh, what we call a sustainable magazines, not because uh, mm, I'm able to target better the, yes, uh, <laughs> sustainable, not only because they use, you know, recycled paper, because this is, I mean, very basic many of these magazines use uh, recycle uh, paper they use uh, you know um, very um, plastic free um, ink uh, and things like this but this magazine especially is sustainable because they don't add uh, new production they use material already existing so this is a very very clever and you know brilliant way of giving new life to material already existing so um, i mean yeah. make
uh, based on uh, Massimiliano's comment. Massimiliano saying it seems that the new digital magazines are targeting better. The I, I think there are two aspects uh, on this. One that uh, uh, from the content point of view, very often these uh, magazines are super specialized, super specialistic. At the same time, and, and therefore, they, they talk uh, to very specific niches, which means uh, that their target uh, is very small, possibly too small to survive. So what I find extremely interesting uh, is the fact that besides being very targeted, they are also able to put in connection other very small targets in order to create some kind of a market. So, for instance, you may not be interested in Archivio, but as a magazine, because you might not be interested in archives, but there might be an issue that really interests you, even though you do a completely different, uh, different job, maybe because you have to do a research because you want to launch a new product that is talking about a specific moment in history. So let's suppose that there is one issue that is dealing with 1968, and you are interested in, in really understanding what was the visual culture at time and you come from a complete sector it could be very useful that specific issue only one issue i don't know if i'm making myself clear and maybe you want to elaborate a little bit on on, on massimiliano's point yes you know uh, the, the point is uh, correct i mean um, these uh, magazine makers are uh, first they are all reader so they decide to do a magazine because they feel the need of saying something, of showing their, you know, taste, their aesthetic, their style. And uh, this is why the reader is always very at the center of this kind of new generation of magazines. They, since they are both reader and producer of magazines, they are, you know, uh, on the two sides of the, you know, of this uh, uh, story. So uh, they know what the creative communities, you know, international creative communities are looking for because they are looking for the same things. So, for example, uh, syndromes, you know, the, the magazines, photography magazines about colors. Uh, she is a very young lady from, you know, Denmark, and uh, she works for, you know, fashion brands as well. And she, you know, she, she knows that uh, uh, brands, when I, like fashion brands, design brands, they need to, you know, do research. Uh, they need to do mood board because, you know, next collection collection might be around uh, the white, the white total white collection in fashion or, you know, in design, they are producing objects for home interior and they need to, to know which color fits best, which interiors. And she started doing this kind of magazines, which is, you know, a photography magazine because it's full of, you know, images and photo shooting, but it's very, very, uh, you know, um, it, it, it speaks to a, a community. I mean, because you have people coming from fashion or from design or architecture, and they buy them this magazine because they want to know more about the color. So, in this sense, uh, uh, the, the magazine makers uh, knows very, very well the reader, and not only the the, the first niche they refer to but they know the creative community, which is no more a niche. It's really an audience, a wider audience. And um, for these reasons, these magazines become uh, uh, collectible because they are, you know, 
they are something that you know um, are very precious because are a sort of uh, research experimentation and even if you are not looking for the specific topic uh, the magazine might be useful for you for other jobs other works or you know for clients uh, a lot of you know communication or ads agency are always looking for new fresh approaches ideas because they have several clients with the several uh, style and they have to you know to 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 to, to find the right um, uh, proposal so these magazines are the sort of i mean uh, um, kind of um, you know, uh, once you know, the, the where the in some big fashion brands, the were uh, a person in charge of scouting. You know, it was uh, the person that you know travel ar around the world, scouting new trends, scouting new mm, materials. Now uh, there are no more this kind of you know scouting but uh, through this kind of magazines you can you know do more or less the same thing because they are a sort of concentrate of uh, a lot of uh, aesthetics uh, suggestions a lot of uh, trends so in this sense uh, the the you know the fan base the audience base is wider uh, than uh, you can think about so talking about uh, you know uh, uh, okay thank you Massignan. so talking about uh, the reader one another very important point is the advertising because uh, here i want to do you know a, a go back to traditional magazines uh, because uh, traditionally magazines uh, uh, don't make money from the cover price but they make money from selling advertising so this is why when you buy you know a, like vogue or other you know l or other uh, kind of magazines you have a lot of pages full of advertising but you know the magazines in this case is not the product for sale but instead the readers are the product for sale so the, the let's say the unspoken agreement between uh, traditional magazines and the reader is that the reader gets cheap content in return for looking at some advertising so in this way the advertising get access to readers in return for funding the magazine it's a sort of a circle but if advertisers can reach the same readership somewhere else for example through you know instagram through the digital platform the magazine the traditional magazine is in trouble because they are losing readership and advertiser so in this sense um, independent magazines uh, oh i mean the new generation of magazines are defined especially by their fresh approach to advertising because if you browse this kind of magazines you will you know find that there are sometimes the um, advertising is completely absent or is very very minimal and specially created i show you some example uh, so here there is a very nice quote and ruth jamison she has printed uh, published a few years ago a book about you know contemporary magazines and she said that these magazines are an affordable way to buy into a brand or lifestyle or to indulge a passion much like a bottle of number five chanel is an affordable way to take home some chanel so in this sense uh, the i mean the advertising so you will see for example in this 
first example wa wallet. Okay, so, you know, magazines maker of this kind of new indie magazines reject advertising for two reasons. The first, because, you know, it's more, I mean, technical aspect because they don't want to spoil the flow. So if you browse a magazine, the advertising is always uh, a kind of stop, you know, it's something that is disturbing. And second, because indie magazines have international readership, as we say, said before, you think about the uh, old magazine, which is a magazine from South Africa or, you know, other magazine from around the world. And the readers, the readership is connected by interest, not geography, is what we say. So readers have in common the interests for this kind of publication. They don't have in common the, 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 the where they live, where they work. Meanwhile, the advertisers have regional budgets and targets. So for these reasons, uh, the traditional advertiser don't fit this kind of new magazines because advertisers have budgets and have targets uh, very, very precise. But these magazines speak to a wider audience, international, so they, you know, the two things cannot fit one in another. And Wallet is one very, very, uh, I mean, brilliant project. First, because the founder, uh, she is a very, very young, she, her name is Elise by Olsen. She, she is from Norway and uh, she has been appointed the youngest uh, editor in the world because she started her first uh, um, magazine uh, when she was 13 years old. And it was a youth magazine called Rachel's Paper. And, um, you know, it, it was a very successful magazine. And when she turned 18, she decided to resign from her magazine because she said she was uh, out of the target. So she started this new publication called Wallet. And it's a fashion magazine. Um, it's more related to uh, theory and critics about fashion system. And uh, it's very, very uh, particular and clever way of approaching advertiser because as you can see in the you know uh, where you you can see that the, the ad you can tear off the pages so the advertising pages inside the magazines can be removed so this is a very you know uh, interesting uh, way to have advertising but at the same time to give to the reader the opportunity, the chance to take off the, the ads. So this is going to be very, uh, exactly. And the other aspect is that advertiser, advertising, sorry, uh, you know, get old because if you take a magazine that has, I mean, five or 10 years, you see inside ads that probably are about brands or things that are no more produced. And if the sense of this magazine is to last, to remain, they don't have to, to have um, ads that age. Otherwise, you have a contact, uh, timeless, but you have advertising pages uh, that uh, become old. So for these reasons, advertising, as we can see also in the next example, is a very, very important uh, um, point because uh, once again, the reader is uh, in these classes. Because, uh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> see, because now if you look at, you know, previous uh, ads, it looks very, very strange. If you look, you know, uh, spot on TV, 
it's very very strange feeling so another way is uh, uh, another way is, is through collaboration this kind this uh, magazine is a magazine about contemporary culture and uh, they did a partnership with a fashion brand they give you know the the illustration in this case uh, to Yuna Watanabe and they produce uh, some t-shirt and bags for the spring summer collection so here you don't have uh, an ad inside the magazines but you use the magazine as a brand to um, try to to do partnership with other brands so this is a very um, difficult because you need to have uh, a strong identity i mean your magazine have to be very very um, recognizable but it's very very i mean interesting the way a magazine is uh, conceived as a brand so we are more used to consider vogue as a brand but consider this kind of independent magazine as a brand and do creation partnership between brands it's something very um, unusual and very um, sophisticated because it's really another level of uh, um, approaching advertising so now we move to another uh, important point which is distribution so uh, okay many you know independent uh, uh, magazine publisher are uh, frustrated uh, with the old distribution model because uh, you know the old distribution model is based on the advertising i mean so in the hope of you know reaching the maximum number of readers the traditional magazines print as many copies as possible and these many copies as possible are shipped to as many retailers as possible but then when the issue you know is out of date the retailer uh, you know are obliged to tear off the cover to show that this copy were unsold but in this process you have a lot of you know a considerable percentage of issues that are pulped i mean you know trash way they are you know so you have to to throw away thousands of copies of this magazine and you know this approach is a very old one and uh, it doesn't you know serve the reader because the more money wasted in uh, unnecessary uh, printing uh, and she the less is invested in the content so traditional magazine try to you know um, they pay more attention to advertisers instead of paying attention to the reader so in, in this you know processus you are the old magazines they you know produce and print so many copies because advertisers are happy if you produce more if you print more because you can reach a wider audience but if you invest in printing and shipping and distribution then you have less money to invest in the content which is the reader part so try to avoid this kind of uh, you know uh, no sense uh, this kind of new generation of in magazines uh, looked for alternative way of distribution some of them are uh, experimenting with uh, mm, for example online subscriptions so here is an example this is a website uh, where you can do a sort of uh, you know uh, yeah subscription which might be uh, monthly or per year 
and uh, you receive, uh, you know, whenever uh, <laughs> magazines. So you cannot choose the magazines, but the, when you fill the form, you can, uh, you know, put your preferences in, um, related to the theme or the, um, you know, the language. So this is a, a new approach to distribution. Or, for example, other magazines are doing their own distribution. For example, they do a very, very careful selection of stockists. So they are not interested in uh, being in a newsstand, but they are interested in being in some bookshop or in some museum bookshop or some concept store, uh, some you know galleries. This is an example of Luncheon magazine, which is a fashion magazine, and they have a collaboration with Dover Street Market, which is a very famous concept store, and they have several locations uh, from Tokyo to London, New York, and they do a sort of installation as a brand, once again, and they you know, sell the magazine and promote the brand of the magazines. Or uh, this other example, migrant uh, has been uh, uh, is it necessary to open up. But, uh, okay, um, a migrant uh, uh, is a magazine about uh, you know uh, about. Uh, it's a very complicated magazine, but it's a uh, uh, yes circulation of people, goods, information. It has been a very very important magazine, and uh, it has it, this experience uh, uh, is over because the you know the, the the publisher decided since the beginning of doing only six issues. This is uh, not very surprised because many magazines uh, decide from the beginning of doing a number of issues because they say they are going to talk about this topic about you know um, research and they decide to do only with for a limited period of, of time. And migrant, for example, is a very, very important project because not only because of the you know very actual uh, theme, but because they work a lot with museum. They did talk in the Tate Modern. They were um, part of the Triennale di Milano Broken Nature exhibitions. So once again, you have the magazines, but you know you try to 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 to, 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 to distribute the magazine through different uh, uh, channel not on always the same and last point which is i mean the most important and you know we have already used this word community is uh, the fact that these magazines are able to create a community the fact that these magazines are very focused on the reader and they are very very um, they have a very um, managerial approach they are able to create a, 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 an audience but the correct word is community and the, the one of the most important uh, example is the uh, King Folk magazines. Um, King Folk, maybe some of you knows the magazine, is a, a so-called lifestyle magazine, and uh, it, it has been launched in uh, 2011 as an outgrow uh, of a college project. So very young people, and. Uh, King Folk, uh, you know, immediately uh, reflect the do-it-yourself do uh, aesthetic that was in vogue at that time, you know, in the 2011-2012. Uh, but, you know, uh, at the time King Folk uh, came out, the first issue, uh, Instagram was just, uh, you know, uh, nine uh, months, years old. And in many ways, uh, you know, the two media converge perfectly. So uh, thousands and thousands of hashtag King Folk, which became a sort of uh, 
you know, a word, I mean, uh, uh, kinfolk style. And uh, as you can see from the slide, kinfolk has uh, a 1 million 50 followers. And uh, starting from, you know, Instagram, they uh, now have uh, a, a sort of, uh, um, you know, not only a brand, they really are a, an agency, a big agency, because they produce uh, uh, campaigns and film for brands such as Zara, uh, Diesel, uh, LG. And so this is an example of how uh, a community can be helpful not only for the magazine itself but for creating you know uh, agency for creating uh, you know collaboration for creating uh, an industry so most of the people know kinfolk as a magazine but in fact kinfolk it's really a, a word Another famous example is Monocle. Monocle started in 2007-2008 and it started as, you know, a lifestyle men's magazine and it became uh, really a brand, uh, a company because now you have uh, also like um, uh, dresses, you know, a collection, you have a cafe, uh, monocle cafe you have also all the publishing house so a lot of books and all the gadget uh, monocle gadget related to the travel so these are all example of how much uh, how important is community for you know the, the growing of the magazine and the growing of the you know the, the project then I, I have two other example of uh, um, events related to the magazines. This is uh, Off Print in Paris. Off Print is, you know, a project uh, that supports independent uh, publisher, uh, so magazines and, uh, you know, also um, publisher books. And uh, this uh, fair is held in um, France, in uh, Paris, sorry, in London and uh, in Arles, south of France. And they reach every year more than 25,000 visitors. So once again, a huge community. So um, if you put one niche next to another, this, you know, become a community, international community of very high profile because, you know, um, this community is very, very, you know, uh, interesting for, you know, a marketing from a marketing point of view, because they are very young, they are between 25, 35 years old, they are very cultivated. So they have, you know, degree, PhD. So it's a very, very interesting um, target for uh, marketing uh, departments of different brands. And then one last example of community is exhibitions. There are several exhibitions around these kind of publications. Uh, one of the first uh, important uh, exhibition was held uh, um, at MoMA in New York, and it was in uh, 2012, and it, and it was about uh, uh, millennial magazines. Now in Rome, uh, the Macro Museum uh, reopened in last July and the first exhibition was, you know, titled Editorial and it was starting from uh, the magazine. So the editorial is the, you know, introduction of a content in a magazine and all the exhibition was around uh, this theme and the fact that how the magazine is developed. So these are all the, you know, uh, just to give you a very, very brief overview of the, not only the differences, because it's not about uh, differences uh, between uh, traditional magazines and new magazines, but it's very, really a new way of thinking. Uh, it's really something new. So um, in this sense, uh, it's not, 
that uh, this kind of uh, phenomenon is uh, because of you know people have nostalgia of uh, the paper because some ask me very often ah people buy magazines uh, as they buy vinyls because they you know the, the the smell of the paper no it's not this uh, people that uh, decide to do magazines now uh, and people who buy and read these magazines are very very young and they even did not uh, the smell of the paper I mean they grow up uh, in digital area so they decide to do and to read and buy a magazines because they feel uh, the importance of uh, um, owing a content they feel the importance of having something that uh, you know lasts and stand the, the, the time and in this sense uh, this is a new kind of industry because the magazine is only a first step. As I said, often mm, some of these projects are um, very are creative projects, and the fact that they are printed in paper is just one of the uh, possibility of this project. In fact, some of these. Uh, you know, they become uh, exhibitions, they become um, uh, like a performance, uh, they, you know, become agencies, uh, uh, campaigns, films. So um, printing is just a first step of an industry which is, you know, growing and go in a sense uh, some someone else. So this is uh, mm, the, the, the overview. It's a, a more articulated business model than it was before because people now have more um, consciousness. They know, even if they are from creative field, they are very manager of, of themselves. So they know exactly what they want to do. So it's not independence as like they do something uh, they all in the bedroom, but they are very independent because they think, uh, you know, uh, they have lateral thinking. They try new solution. In this sense, they are independent. And then uh, I have a quick, uh, um, you know, uh, some slide about. Uh, uh, reading room which is the place I you know I founded in 2018 and uh, it's not you know it's not a bookstore it's not only a, a space uh, but it's really a, a meeting place so the idea was to do a space entirely dedicated to this kind of new generation of magazines and uh, I started this, you know, beautiful adventure, uh, thinking that uh, the community uh, was out there and was waiting to find a place uh, to go and to meet other people. And this is reading room. I mean, mm, of course, you can come in and buy a magazine, but the most important part of this project is all the activities around the magazines uh, through reading room uh, I, di uh, I did I did talk I did the magazines lounge I did exhibitions I did you know a r radio program podcast uh, and it's a way to you know to give visibility to these projects and to give voice to all the uh, magazine makers that are working so hard and so uh, professionals to in these uh, uh, projects. So just some images, the space, which is a very small place, but it doesn't matter if this physical space is small because, you know, the content as the magazine is, you know, uh, bigger, is uh, wider. So um, 
around the world there are this kind of uh, space. Uh, the most famous is in Berlin, it's called Do You Read Me? And it was opened in 2008. It's a sort of, um, you know, uh, grandfather of uh, this kind of uh, place. Uh, but you have place in, uh, in London, in Paris, uh, and it's important because these places are a sort of a stage for all the people who work and, you know, collaborates uh, with these kind of publications. And we need this space, place because uh, it's a way, <laughs> it's a way to, to, to you know, to, to, to let people know that these magazines are, re are you know, are there and uh, you can you know buy a magazine for a very very um, you know cheap man cheap price but when you browse you have you know a new world is up and up to you so some i put some images of previous events you know and there is always uh, a community, there is always uh, people uh, who are looking for this content. Uh, this, for example, was an exhibition um, we did uh, one year ago, and it was about an exhibition about uh, uh, the theme was, uh, the, you know, an, a research, a visual research about gender. So we ask uh, uh, five different magazines from um, five different countries to uh, send uh, material starting from the magazines. And, you know, you have different uh, um, kind of content. You have a video, you have uh, photos, uh, you have a poem. So it's very, very interesting for, for, for all of these uh, reasons. So these are my uh, conclusions that, in fact, they are not really a conclusion because uh, this is a very, you know, brand new industry and uh, a lot of work uh, still need to, to be done. So, uh, as I said, this is not a continuation, but a rebirth. So we have to, you know, kind of a renaissance and... Uh, Everything need to be uh, rethink, need to be uh, you know uh, also applied, and uh, in a sense, uh, what is left, uh, for instance, is uh, you know let's say the, the scientific part because it's very very hard to find. I mean numbers uh, because uh, um, some publishers are very very small, so you it's very hard to find, uh, um, you know, uh, technical numbers, budgets, but it's something that uh, need to be done because this kind of new movement, for for instance, is more a, a, a movement than a real industry, needs to be fixed, needs to be analyzed, it needs to be uh, translated into industry uh, an industry approach so this is uh, you know my presentation my big overview so i, I say one hour power so one hour i'm uh, no i mean thank time. you so much <laughs>